Hello everyone, welcome back to Addicted Fishing. We made it to the lake. Woo! Right now we are on a little film-a-thon. We just came from the Columbia River filming a hilarious episode. We had Lucas Holmgren and my best friend filling the boat. And we actually rallied from the big river all the way up here, grabbed the kayaks, got the fly rods, and we're at the lake to do a little kayak camping once again. It's fall time. Fall time can be some of the best times to catch giant, giant trophy trout, and that's the mission on this one. So we came to a lake where you can only fly fish, there's big fish, we got the kayaks, we got the camp gear, and we got a windy lake. So we gotta make it across here before it gets dark and get camp set up, and then we're gonna hit it hard in the morning for some giant trophy trout. So let's get this show on the road. how I feel right now. You come out of break on the head, you'll be wearing her time so free. Yeah, she's trying to avoid you avoid everyone. Even the battle, the battle for peace. Okay everybody. The wind is blowing. We got up here pretty late. That's why we're going to set up camp first. Again, we were fishing all day today. And our goal is to make it all the way across this lake, which isn't the biggest in the world. I don't know, it's probably a mile and a half across this lake. Straight into the wind though. I'm looking at this weather coming over the mountains right now and it looks like we might get a little rain tonight, but it's supposed to be warm. It's supposed to stay about 60, so it shouldn't be the worst rain camping in the world. But we gotta fight this wind. We're gonna earn our dinner, get all the way across this lake, get set up in the woods and maybe have some time for fishing tonight. But with this wind like this, I don't want to kill our batteries. That's why we're paddling across. Obviously, these old town kayaks have some super badass setups. I got the little Minn Kota. I got the dog in front of me. But I got the little Minn Kota up there, ready to work tomorrow. So it should be interesting. I'm going to start fishing in the morning the way I did it in my last kayak adventure. If you guys didn't see that one, go check that one out. It was a couple of weeks ago here on Addicted Fishing. I did the same thing we're doing today. I packed everything on the kayak, and I went to a new lake I'd never fished before. But going to get to camp. Gonna get some food, because I'm hungry. I'm probably gonna drink White Claw. Ladies and gentlemen, we have made it to the other side of the lake. Took about a half hour, felt good, felt the burn. It's so peaceful over here, I can hear the fish jumping everywhere. The crickets are singing, nice warm breeze coming out of the mountains. The leaves are starting to turn colors. It's starting to be fall, and I couldn't be happier. Comment below if you guys love fall time. I know I do. It kind of I have I have outdoorsman anxiety in the fall. I don't know what to do every day. There's mushrooms to pick. There's fish to catch. There's salmon. There's trout. There's ocean stuff to do. There's hiking. There's hunting. There's just, just everything. For me, I, I never get any sleep. That's to say that much. So excited to be filming with you guys this fall and showing you all these awesome adventures that we're going on. Uh, but on this one, we have made it. I'm not quite sure where we're going to camp. I've kind, of, I've kind of been eyeballing. I heard a couple of rumors from some friends of mine who encouraged me to go here uh, of some really cool camps on this side of the lake uh, that I could paddle over to and set camp up in the woods. So I'm seeing one right now. I'm kind of really liking that this uh, giant tree over here. It's something, I don't know, it's just, it's just calling me. Well, it ain't much, but it's home. I saw this little trail over here. Let's check this out. What do we got to work with here? Once again, Jordan's looking for camp right before dark. Some place he's never been. This doesn't look too bad though. Check it out. Oh, this looks nice. This looks nice. Let's see here. Might have come up the wrong trail, but looks like we have a pretty sweet little area back in here. Whoa. Nearly died once again. This will do. This will do. Here, it looks a little cleared out. Maybe like someone's camped here before. I don't know, but it's gonna have to work. Like we said, it ain't much, but it's home. Oh, here we go. Now we're talking. Camp Arama. Welcome to camp. 
Got a little too dark to show you the tarpology last night. Had to cook the salmon for the last video, so don't forget to go check that out. But we got it set up. I went simple. I just did one static line, tree to tree. A little still in bed. He's not very amused. The owls kept him up last night. They were hoot, hoot, hooting at us all night long, making screechy weird sounds. Sounds like Sasquatch out there. But pin the other end of the tarp down. That's just a really simple way. Again, if you don't have your, your tent with you or you're on, in a pan, honestly, I just like it. It's easy, it's quicker than a tent. It actually offers more cover a lot of the time to just throw a quick tarp up like that and get everything under the tarp and ready for bed and you're ready to go. I got some dang good sleep. It was beautiful last night. Full moon, it was brighter than heck all night long and it was just so peaceful out here. But this morning, as I started to wake up, I started to notice minute by minute the wind picking up it's about seven o'clock right now but since about 5 30 since right about daylight six o'clock it started blowing like heck again so i'm really hoping that doesn't affect our fishing today but just look at how beautiful and magnificent this place is this morning we're in paradise Nothing like some smoked salmon dip and a pickle to start your day. So I'm starting the morning here with a little stand-up paddleboard action. It's a little bit too shallow for this motor to go down. I don't really feel like kayak paddling, so just in a little early morning stuff. What's up everybody? What's up? Alright, there we go. There's the deep. There's the deep drop off. So I'm not gonna get too crazy here. Because right out the gate, you can already tell this is fishier than heck. I could hear these things flopping and splashing and rolling around all night last night while we were in camp um, right in this little bay here. And I think the fishing should be good right on these little ledges. So what I'm gonna do is exactly like I used this boat last time, like my little Bassmaster Classic. I'm gonna get my fly rod set up. I'm just gonna troll around and I'm gonna start fishing just all these big flats and I'm gonna just slowly work my way across the lake. So not a very big lake. It's not that windy as I expected. Not as bad as it was yesterday and hopefully it'll calm down a little bit. But I'm gonna put my glasses on. I'm gonna start trolling these shallow flats and see if I literally can't sight cast these things and try to get them to bite my fly as they uh, chase that little woolly bugger back in. But let's get set up. All right, so I changed to a 5X tippet, which is pretty darn light. I want to keep this stuff fairly light so that it can get down and in front of those fish. And it's late in the season, so a lot of these trout have been getting fished for for quite a while now. A lot of, lot of pressure, a lot of people around, a lot of people going hard at trying to catch these bad boys. But what I'm going to do is I'm going with the olive bugger. I, for some reason, I don't know why this water is just saying all of it to me. I can just hear it. Oh, oh, we had one sip right next to us, you guys. They're sipping. They're sipping. They're sipping their early morning coffee. Oh, messed up my knot. I got too excited. I need to get myself out there. Oh my God, oh my God. Okay. Here we go. So like I said, we're gonna start the morning off mainly just hunting around, looking in these shallow flats and stuff. And then as we need to start covering ground, I'm just looking for feeding fish, honestly, like that one already, as we came out, just came out a little bit, you know, 100 yards from the bank and saw one roll and sip some stuff off the surface. So I'm not gonna fish surface flies, I'm gonna stay deep. This stuff looks about, I don't know, 10, 12 feet deep. It can't be too extremely deep of a ledge until we get out towards the middle, but we're obviously at the inlet of the lake. So this is where all the fresh water is coming in throughout the year. If any, there's probably just a little bit of spring water, underground water coming in at this point, but still it will attract those fish. It will give them that, that fresh water. The temperature barrier is probably a little bit different than it is out in the middle of the lake. But right now the deeper water is going to be colder because the lake hasn't flipped yet to where the cold water comes to the surface. So that deep water is going to be colder, probably a little more nutrient rich, but I'll tell you what, there's a lot of little creatures swimming around along the bank right there in camp. So it makes me think that there's a lot of little aquatic life. They're probably eating little leeches and, and small little grubby fish, just like the, 
basically the style of woolly bugger that I have on here. Oh, one just rolled again right there in front of me. It's a long cast, but I think I can do it. Just a little short. It's okay, he feels it. He feels it. He feels the mojo. So a lot of these big fish in these lakes like this, and again, we came to a lake not so much to catch and kill a lot of fish, but to look for that trophy one. This place has is, is always been fabled and famous for its really, really large species of trout, whether it be rainbow, whether it be browns. I've never really caught any big brown trout in my life. So I'm really looking forward to hopefully getting an opportunity at one, but it's gonna take a whole different strategy of fishing because they're a lot different trout than a rainbow. So choice of fly is gonna be different as well as how we approach them. So I'm going around a lot of structure. I've always been told that brown trout like wood. And as I came into these little shallow flats yesterday, I saw quite a few little brown trout that took off, but we're looking for the hog daddy. I'm just gonna work down this bank through all this structure, all the way back to basically the boat ramp. And then I'm gonna work the other side of the lake, try to work the structure. I might need to start changing flies a little bit. I'm casting next to fish that are jumping. I'm not getting reacted to. So I might go to a sinking tip. I might go to a different color fly. I don't know. Got him, got him, got him. Fish the frick on, everyone. Heck yeah. Heck yeah, nice one too. Oh yeah. What is this? What is this thing? It looks like a brown. I can't tell. Ding near looks like a, like a bull trout in a way. I really can't tell yet. Oh, what is it? It's a rainbow. <laughs> wow, cool everybody. First one of the morning. Look at how beautiful this fish is, everybody. Holy moly. Look at how he's all, all both of his maxillary fins are all roughed up. He's, a, he's actually an older fish. Kind of looks like it might be a native trout to this lake. Doesn't really have that hatchery trout look to it, but look at that little woolly bugger right in the side of his mouth. Oh, what a blessing. Hell yeah. Heck yeah, everybody. We did it. See you later, little friend. We did it. And it didn't even take that long. Probably the first half hour of fishing, working my way through this structure once again, using the little Bassmaster Classic. And the old olive bugger did the work. Yes. Oh, I love the essence of fall. Starts getting that nice crisp mornings. Just perfect for coffee drinking next to the lake. So, so excited I got that first fish. Already today is such a success. Oh, got him. Oh yeah, baby. Woo! Right under the cameraman's boat. Second fish of the morning. Yeah! Almost the exact same lane. I think I found something here. I think I found maybe a little underwater spring or something because that was the second or third cast right after I just got that thing going again. Got it down there, got my line out. Oh, another just beauty. These things are so cool looking. They're not your typical stalker rainbow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Little, you take it easy. You take it easy, Tiny. Wow. Well, this one's a cutthroat. You can see it has those beautiful cuts right under its gills there. Man, what an incredible fish. What a blessing. Thank you so much, little guy. Gosh, they are feisty. Can't hardly hold on to them. And you can almost tell it's a different species of trout. They have that like really pale looking color to them. Almost like a, a salmon looking color, like the actual color salmon, not the color of a salmon. What are you talking about, Jordan? Nobody knows. But we have a second fish. <laughs> yes. Oh, that was a good strike. That was a really good strike. Come back for it. Dang it. Really good strike, everybody. I was just kind of letting that thing float with the current here. We've got a nice little wind current going and I'm just keeping my, my eye pilot pointed north here. Just keeping me with like, I'm, what, what am I going? What do I got it set at here? Half, I got it set at half a one. So just like basically a half mile an hour pointed back into the wind just so I don't drift too fast. I want to move. I want the, I want to utilize that wind in this motor to like effectively work this whole bank. But the key of it is, is I don't want to move too fast. So if I let that wind just do its thing to me, I'm going to be clear across the lake here in, in 10, 15 minutes. And I don't want that. I want to be able to work this whole structure. Okay, let's get that thing back out there. That was a good strike. Okay, 
I gotta get a cast over by this log here. It's just screaming brown trout to me. What's it screaming to you guys? I think it seems, I think it's screaming brown trout. Brown town, brown town for sure. Oh, that was, that landed right in brown town. Whew. What a cast. Oh, I was just getting hammered. Oh, I shouldn't have pulled it away from him. Son of a gun. Brown town pulled through, man. Brown, there was somebody home in Brown town. Maybe it was the mayor. Come here. Come on back. That was a bad cast. Damn, man, he was munchy, wunchy in it. And now I think it's time for. Ooh, I don't know. I like this little olive one with the legs. What do you guys think of that? Let me this one right here. Little olive with the leg. I like it. Let's try it. I'm gonna go with a little bit lighter fly because I have the super heavy line now, so I'm not gonna need that tungsten headed fly to get me all the way down. Man, this wind is really not optimal, everybody, but we're gonna just try to use it to our advantage. I'm actually saving, I feel like, a lot of battery life right now by doing what we're doing and almost doing like a, a wind troll, putting the kayak sideways like this, getting that lead line down deep by the bottom and then just giving it these little flips and these twitches. Same idea as me stripping it in and waiting, stripping in and waiting, but I'm covering hundreds of yards worth of, of ground. But I don't know, I just hate the wind anyways. I don't wanna kill these batteries very fast. I wanna fish hard here today and try to get a big fish, but I can already tell with the clear skies and how there's no clouds. I'm guessing it's gonna get pretty, oh, got him. Something, I don't know what it is. Doesn't, can't tell what it is. Might be a stick. What is it? It's a stick. It's a really nice native stick. Oh man, this is what we came for everybody. These are the browns we were talking about. These are the browns that I've always heard about. Look at this thing. Look how brown it is. Holy moly, look at those teeth. Tiny, what do you think? Okay. Well, there you have it. The brown we've all been waiting for. Just slammed it, look at that, right in his upper lip. Woo! See you later, little guy. Oh my God, he's got it right in front of me, guys. He's got it right in front of me. Oh my God, that was such a rip off. The thing chased it all the way back. I had my line all messed up. There's one right there. I'm gonna get him. Oh, damn it, that was cool. I had one chase it all the way to the boat and he saw me do that big mend with my line all weird. And the thing chased it as my line was falling. I was trying to catch up with my fly line. That thing chased it all the way back onto the boat. Biggest one so far, by far. back to the other side of the lake and these fish are starting to roll. I'm starting to see them around where we were just getting them again around the old brown town here. We're back to brown town, everyone. What I wanna keep continuing to try this as I go through here until I get to the end of this cove and then I'm gonna let that wind blow me back through. And I'm just gonna change up my leader to like a 10 foot leader in this black bugger. Same bully bugger I was using earlier that I caught those fish on, but different color. Maybe, maybe it'll change up a little bit of the presentation. Now that the sun's a little bit higher, it's a little bit brighter out, give them something to see. Something shiny. So far, this lead line thing has not been working. The sink tip. Oh, that was a fish. That was definitely a fish. Just got a Yankee doodle. Oh, got him, got him. Oh, that was epic. Oh, that was great. Just hammered it down there in Brown Town, guys. Brown Town and down. Oh, that was cool. Right by the old tree. There's this giant tree. I'm guessing this looks like a big mud flow that kind of came into this lake here just by the color of it all. Oh man, that's a nice one. Looks like another beautiful cutthroat. Oh, how cool. Oh, he slammed it so hard too. That's one of the coolest takes ever on a fly rod. Just that big lazy line laying down. You give it a couple of jerks every now and again. Get all herky jerky. Oh, that's a good fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Oh, that was so neat, everybody. That was neato. Make sure that thing's off. And so all I did, all I did to get that thing to bite, he had bit a couple of times, or he bit just a second ago. I think he'd probably been following it for a while. Oh man, look at that beautiful cutthroat. Oh my goodness. Look at how incredibly, incredibly colored that thing is. Oh, come on back. Come back to me. Come on back now. Come on back now. There we go. Just look at the beauty. Just look at how beautiful that thing is. So many different colors and you see that red, that little red cut right under his chin there. Oh, these are such special fish. Let's get that hook out. Oh man. Look at that. What a special creature. I'm not gonna eat any of the fish out of this lake because you can see these little parasites these things have this time of year. Just from that water being warm, that'll heal once everything gets colder. But right now I wouldn't want to be eating these little things. See you later, buddy. Oh, cool. Got one on the sink tip. I was just talking crap about it. I don't know if we can review the footage, but I just said this thing's not gonna work. So far, this lead line thing has not been working. The sink tip. Oh, got him, got him. And wham, right by Brown Town. So let's do another circle back along that log. That thing was killer. Oh, instant, instant, instant. Oh my God, about took the rod out of my hand. Oh my God, this is chaos. Oh, he came off. Almost fell out of the kayak. Holy but Jesus. Woo! I love when a change works. I'm still not quite steady from that one. Holy crap. So, this is what happened, everyone. I don't know if you were watching, but I cast it out there, right about there, maybe a little further, more like right about there. I went like this twice, right? And I was like, what? Oh, instant, instant, and I almost died. look like big feeding grounds. I can see these big grass mats almost underneath the water here. This is different in color, whatever it might be, whether it's sand or rock or whatever, but nonetheless, I'm sure there's some good structure on it. Oh, got him. Oh my God, it's huge. It's freaking huge. It's huge. Oh, that's a good one. Oh yeah, that's enough for little to give it a little yippee yippee. Yeehaw, little. Oh, that was good stuff. Oh man, that's a good one, everyone. By far the best fish so far. Man, that's a good one. Actually, it's not the biggest cutthroat yet, but it just slammed it so dang hard it freaking caught me off guard. Just a perfect little fish on a perfect day. These cutthroat, the colors on them and the spots on them are so unique. Each and every one of them, I swear, has their own little character. They just so much resemble a steelhead in so many ways. These things do live in the salt water as well. These things go out, also go out to the ocean, which is kind of the strain that these ones are in this lake here. See you later, little friend. Boy, I love it when a plan comes together. We're getting our butts kicked by the wind out here though, so I think we're gonna fish this bank out, let ourselves go all the way down around this point, down to that fresh water. If we find a big one in the way, perfect. If not, we're gonna hit the truck, we're gonna head up the hill, and we're gonna see if we can't find some stuff in the woods. All right, everyone, we can't do the wind anymore. It's getting a little too vicious. I'm not really being able to effectively fish any of this, so it's about that time. It's time to hit the woods. We're gonna load the kayaks up. We're heading to another lake to make another video for tomorrow. But the goal is to go get one fish on the lake where we're making this video. We're gonna keep it a secret so that we have some dinner tonight. Hopefully either find some berries or some mushrooms on the way over there and do a little catch and cook here this afternoon and evening. So I'm gonna reel this in very slow just in case. But it's been an awesome experience out here on this lake. Brand new lake, once again, it's one of my very favorite things to do any time of year is go to a new lake and explore. Uh, I feel like lakes are so much harder to find fish on than, than creeks and, and rivers are because there's so much more room and you have to really use your mind and your, and your techniques and your just knowledge of fish to find the dang things and we did. We found a beautiful camp. We had an amazing night of camping, caught some incredible cutthroat this morning and now we got some foraging to do. So I'm gonna pull up the Minn Kota, I'm gonna put my fly rod away, we're gonna paddle our butts all the way back to the truck and load up and get up in the mountains. way back to the dock. This is the coolest thing ever. I'm literally sailing. I'm, I'm using the kayak paddle in the wind. I'm using my rudder back here, turning it back and forth. And as you look, like I see I'm turning left, turns me left. 
I'm gonna turn it right. It's gonna start to turn me right. And I'm literally sailing back to the boat ramp right now. Another advantage of these kayaks. And I'm not trying to hopelessly sail to pitch these kayaks to you guys, but I'm just literally having fun in them. I'm like learning something new every time I get into it. I've never been a kayak fisherman before. I've just been a whitewater kayaker. Which, on the lookout, there's some awesome whitewater kayaking content coming up here on Addicted Fishing. I ran some giant rapids and a couple waterfalls in a recent filming of a video. So, but I'm not trying to get too giddy on these kayaks, but I just really like them. They're so much fun. And I just, I can't wait to keep fishing these lakes and stuff in them. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we made it to the mountains and to our blueberry patch. So I'm gonna do a really special sauce with my fish that I catch tomorrow in the next video, but I wanted to show you guys how to pick blueberries and how to find these delicious edible wild berries up here in the mountains. And what we have right here behind me is a lot of blueberries. I'm sure you can see them up in there, all those little guys. There's quite a few more on the other side of the road, but these ones are a little bit easier to see for you guys. But you can see all these blueberries. And the difference in between wild blueberries and huckleberries is the shape of these leaves. These little round leaves like this are a good indication of it being a blueberry bush. I'll show you a huckleberry here in just a minute once we find one. So here's a huckleberry bush. This is a really popular spot, so I'm not guessing there's going to be too many. But we're going by, so I want to show you exactly what a huckleberry looks like. And there it is. It's a little one, but you definitely see the difference in the color. See the difference in the taste? Mm. Quite a bit sweeter than the blueberries. These blueberries obviously look like blueberries, and their leaves are much more round. They're a little bit more of a bitter taste to them, but in my opinion, it's going to make an even better sauce because I want that little bitterness, a little bit of a tang, if you will, to go with my fish that I'm going to be cooking tomorrow. So I'm going to get the picking. These are blueberry bushes, everyone. I'll find us a huckleberry so I can show you those. But I'm going to get the picking. I'm only going to get a handful or so because I'm just going to use this in my sauce. I'm going to make kind of a tartar, but shh, I'm not telling you too much about it. Let's get to picking. So a lot of time when I'm looking for these things, I like to go around and look for the spots where I find a bush with the most berries on it. Because you know what they say, you can spend a lot of time picking the wrong bush in life. Ooh, now we're in the honey hole. Getting into some big ones here. Yum yums, yum yums. They're everywhere. Yum yums. Violet, you're turning violet. It's kind of hard to get them in the bag sometimes. I don't want to eat too many though. I'm going to be camping tonight. Don't want to be doing the old Chicago two step. You know, it's just so amazing to live in a place where we get to go out and play in Mother Nature and also, at the same time, get to play with Mother Nature. And what I mean by that is, is stuff like this. Being able to go and forage your own food, catch your own food, whether it be a trout, salmon, uh, shoot an animal. We saw some grouse on the side of the road that we could have easily chased into the trees and shot and made absolutely delicious and amazing meals and memories at the same time. And I, I just gotta say, I feel super thankful today, especially being this time of year. I mentioned this earlier in the video in the fall, for me, I get such bad anxiety because there's so much fun stuff to go do. So just want to thank the creator and thank all you addicts for being along for the ride and going out on these adventures with us when you can at home and maybe even getting some ideas and stuff to go do and ways to enjoy the great outdoors with your friends, family, or just by yourself. So that should be just about it. Minus, actually I'm gonna leave that little bit of cedar in there. That might add a little flavor if you know what I'm saying. A little bit of a cedar bough. Oh, it has a little hint of cedar bough. Hmm. Yum, yum. So this should be plenty for the recipe I'm gonna do. I'm basically making a dipping sauce so I don't need a ton. So let's wrap this up. Let's get the drive to the lake. But we're gonna do a quick scenery shot while we take off and go to this next lake so you guys can enjoy some of the beauty that we've been driving through today. It's been an incredible early fall day. The leaves are starting to turn color and the drone shots are epic. Enjoy.
Well, we made it to camp and on tonight's menu is the wackiest, weirdest, most delicious freaking thing you've ever had in your life. And it's Jordan Kinnigy's fish bum soup. This is something really weird I came up with in camp a while back. It was really cold one night and we didn't have any cup of noodles or anything. And I was cold, but I had a bunch of stuff in my box and I had my trusty salmon dip as I usually always have on a camping trip. It's just so easy to eat and it's so nutrient rich and there's nuts and there's, there's vegetables and there's fish and there's cheese, there's everything in there that keeps you going and keeps you on the kayaks or doing whatever you're doing while you're out there. But this was totally random. I didn't have any broth, I didn't have any soup, but I had some Old Bay and I had some garlic powder and I had a couple extra little seasonings up there in there just for, for flavor. But Old Bay is basically like, a, it's, a, it's a soup broth. It's what the flavor tastes like to me in particular. You can put it on fries, you can put it on anything, but you use it to like boil crab and stuff. So it's mainly a broth. It gives a pretty hearty broth flavor. So I'm gonna put about, I don't know, a teaspoon and a half of that stuff in there. You don't wanna go too crazy because it's pretty darn salty. Then I'm gonna go just some garlic powder. And use as much of that as you want. That's not gonna hurt. Just a dash of blackening seasoning, just to give it a little heat. And then a little bit of kicking chicken, just for flavor. Have something floating around in there. Last but not least, the weirdest thing, it's something I put into a different fish soup of mine that I absolutely loved, and I didn't want to leave it out of this one, and that is, drum roll. Dill. I'm just gonna use a little bit of dill pickle juice. Get that all mixed up. And I got this water boiling behind me. So basically I have my stock. This is like a really, like a bouillon cube almost. Very salty, it's got nothing but seasonings and pickle juice in it. It does not look very appetizing, but let me tell you. Salty and good. Next what I'm gonna do here, is I'm just gonna take a couple of scoops, and this has cilantro, uh, green onions, um, peanuts, uh, also has some cashews, it has some almonds, it has, I think I already said cilantro. It's got all kinds of good stuff in there. But I'm gonna take three or four scoops and cream cheese. So what that does is that cream cheese melts, all those veggies start to float around and it kind of gives you the whole pot of stew that you want in your soup. So, crazy idea, I know, but wait till it's done and see how amazing it looks. Last but not least, a little fresh cracked pepper. And we're ready to go. All right, my water's boiling. I'm gonna shut it off. I'm gonna add the boiling water to my cup. And continue to stir. You know, see as that cheese starts to melt apart and that dish starts to get to know itself a little bit here, you'll see it start to get tastier and tastier looking. Look at this. The first time I tried it, it blew my mind. And to be quite honest with you, it was only about a few minutes ago. We decided to put it in this video. Let's give her a shot. Phenomenal. Mmm. That cilantro really sets it off with that dill. It's an interesting clash of flavor. That cilantro, that dill, that kind of savory Old Bay flavor. I don't know if you guys have ever tried Old Bay seasoning, but it's really good. It's got like a, again, just almost like a soup flavor, like a like a chicken or like a beef stock. But it goes very, very well with seafood. Oh my God, it's so good. Got an almond right there. Look at how nice that looks. Great option for when you forget soup on a cold night when you're out here camping. I tell you, it's been a heck of a day. Been a lot of driving, a lot of kayaking, and some absolutely beautiful fish caught. It was so amazing. Ta-da, tarpology. The sun set over the peaceful lake as the little dog gazed over it, wondering what the trials of tomorrow would bring. Would there be fish? Maybe. But would there be adventure? Yes.